we are live at five. Um, this week we have a bad question, but we do every week. If you can't hear us, please let us know in the chat. Yeah, don't put a thumbs up. If you can't, can't hear us. No, put a thumbs up if you can hear us. <laughs> put a thumbs down if you can't. She got it right this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so we have five questions as per usual. Um, and we are going to go through those and that's going to answer them. If, yeah, so what is the difference between evaluation and a survey? Okay, so we always get asked actually to go out for a valuation. It's a term that actually is incorrect. The only people that can conduct a valuation are RICS, RICS Qualified Surveyors, and evaluation is the first of three levels of survey that you can have on a property once you've had an offer accepted. So evaluation is the most basic, so survey, people use the terminology survey, it's not actually a survey, evaluation is just making sure that the price that you're paying for the property is the market value. So there are ICS qualified survey will look at comparable properties and depend. It's normally done by the mortgage company or through your mortgage company. So, the, so a mortgage valuation is level one of a survey. If you want an actual survey on a property where you have a look at the condition, then you should be looking at a home buyer's survey or a full structural survey. For buyers of properties, if you're not sure what level of survey that you've had, um, a mortgage valuation is normally around £300, a home buyer's between five and six, and a full structural survey um, would be around 800 to 1,000 pounds with um, additional costs for additional um, checks on like electrics and damp and that sort of thing. So evaluation, we as estate agents don't carry out evaluations. Uh, at Midworks we, we carry out property advice meetings because actually that terminology evaluation is wrong. The people that do valuations are RICS qualified surveyors and it's the first part of a the most basic version of a survey. The difference between an evaluation and a survey is that there's no comeback on the surveyor if they miss something on evaluation. When you pay more, the surveyor has to have a look in more detail at the condition of the property. I feel really low today. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next question, I suppose all of these are kind of about what happens after you've bought a property rather than the process of selling mm -hmm. as That's such. Right. Um, so the next question, when should I pay for searches? Okay, so we get a lot of people who wait to pay for the searches and they will wait for the mortgage offer. Some mortgage advisors will advise people to wait until they get the mortgage offer for the searches. Um, that, in my opinion, is terrible advice because whilst you might be protecting £200 or £300, the cost of the searches, you're probably jeopardising your chances of actually completing the transaction successfully. So, um, my view is you should pay for searches as soon as as soon as you've got a completed change. So, if you're buying a house and it's an empty property, then you should pay for searches as soon as as soon as you possibly can. Um, when you're buying a house, unfortunately, the process means that there is money on the line before there's any level of certainty. My advice, as hard as that might be, is get used to it, get comfortable with it, and pay for the searches because the quicker you pay for your searches. The quicker those searches come back and often your searches can, it's particularly the local search at the moment, is one of those things that can take a long, long time. So my advice to anyone, get comfortable with the fact that buying a house costs a decent amount of money, a lot of money, and pay for your searches right as soon as you can because in the grand scheme of things, if you're buying a house at 200000 the cost of, you know, paying for your searches for £200 is, is very minimal. And if people leave it till they've got the mortgage offer, local search could be three or four weeks, you're just potentially delaying your, your purchase even further. So the next question actually leads on quite nicely. When that whole process is over, what is the actual difference between exchange and completion? Quite a lot of terminology today, isn't yeah. it? We do, get, we do get asked a lot of questions around terminology, I suppose. And, um, we, because we're in the industry and we talk, we use these terms every day. They're not, you know, they're quite normal to us. But if you've not moved house in, I think the average is anywhere between seven and twenty years, depending who you speak to. You won't necessarily know what these terms are. So, exchange of contracts is the stage within a transaction where um, it becomes legally binding. 
So it, there used to be normally a week between exchange of contracts and completion day. Exchange of contracts is where the solicitors basically make that process legally binding. And then the completion is where actually the transaction completes and the money is handed over. At exchange of contracts, there's a deposit paid um, of normally 10%. Um, but at completion, that's when the money changes hand in hands and the, the keys are handed over. Nowadays, exchange and completion can happen in the same day. That often leads to a bit of a sleepless night the night before because, of course, you might be in boxes and you won't actually be legally, you know, the, the transaction isn't legally secure at that stage. So ideally, you know, there's a bit of time between exchange and completion. Exchange is the process. Exchange is just before completion where everything's legally agreed and it's done. If anyone withdraws from the transaction between exchange and completion, then there are penalties for them to pay. Well, um, the challenge, as we talked about with searches before, the challenge with the conveyancing process in this country is nothing is secure until exchange of contracts, and, and often that, yeah, that can be a very long way down the line. Again, for some reason, this one leads on really nicely. <laughs> Have you planned it this week? Honestly, you would think. Um, what happens on completion day? Oh, exciting day. Everyone loves completion day. Well, apart from the people that have to do the moving because it's dead stressful. Um, Completion Day, again, it's one of those that um, people don't really know. We always you know, speak to our clients before and say, well, this is, this is how it will, will happen. Um, it depends on the level of the, the amount of people in the chain with, with exactly what happens on Completion Day. But if you're in the middle of the chain, so you're selling a house and buying another, and there's people buying on before, you're probably going to be homeless for a few hours. So what happens, if you can imagine, if there's a first-time buyer at the bottom of a property and then there's like four other properties in the chain, the first time man has to get his mortgage, he, he sends the money to the other solicitor and the money then works its way up the chain. So if you're, that, um, if you're selling that first house, you will need to release your keys before you can get your keys for your new house. So on completion day, you need to be packed up, ready to move pretty early. Make sure that your vans are all packed up. Go and give your keys to your estate agent. It's one of the important things, I think, to, for an estate agent to have an office because... Um, you need them to take your keys, and then I would say, you know, go go and have a coffee and you know a bite to eat and replenish, and then you need to wait until you get your keys from the estate agent that you're buying off. So the money works its way up the chain, um, and how key handover works is if we take keys from one of our clients who's selling a property, the solicitor will then ring us to confirm once it's actually gone through and once the monies have landed and only at that stage are we able to release keys to the purchaser. So that's why it's important for the estate agent to hold the keys. We have had you know transactions in the past where people have given the keys the day before or what have you think, oh that just creates a you know a very serious headache potentially. So on completion day, pack your house up, give your keys to your estate agent, chill out for potentially a couple of hours, go and collect your keys from, from the new estate agent and then obviously move into that house. But you can have this process whereby there's people sat on the drive and you know, it is quite a stressful situation because there's no fixed time scale on exactly when completion will happen. But normally completion can happen any time between, if it's a very small chain or either start the chain 10 o'clock in the morning, and it normally won't happen any later than three o'clock in the afternoon. So that's why you've got to be packed up and organized before. Does that answer it? Or is that a really long answer? No, I think that answers it. Is it a question we get a lot? Uh, the final question, can you tell me about open days and in particular our open days of Saturday? Yeah, sure. So uh, we are launching a new build development on Saturday. Is that the 5th of March? Saturday the 5th of March, between 12 and 2, we're launching a new development on Chapel Road in Hesketh Bank called Whitegate Gardens. It's a development of nine four-bedroom, semi-detached and detached properties. Um, and the open day or launch event, um, as we call it, will be um, whereby the builder will be in the office. Um, we'll have all of the information that's only just gone onto the internet and we'll have more information um, than that. So people will come in, they'll speak to us about the properties, get to meet the builders and have a conversation with them about the type of finish and sort of frequently ask questions. At the moment, as you can, if you drive down there, you'll be able to see you know, that the buildings are coming on, but actually getting to meet them and see all the computer generated images, see the floor plans, see the prices, see what's on offer. And um, so it's just uh, an event to pass on information where hopefully you know, interested parties can come and have a chat about you know, what I think is quite an exciting development um, over in Hesketh Bank.
Oh, there is uh, ice cream for children. <laughs> Not only that, but there's fish for parents. Oh, right, there you go. Yeah, even that <laughs> Not all adults. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, yeah. fabulous. Well, thanks very much for watching today. Um, if you have got any questions that you would like us to answer um, at these... Um, say events, not really events, but on these Facebook Lives, um, then please either drop us a comment in here, send us a message, or um, send either Holly or I an email, it's just our names, at movingworks.co.uk, we've been receiving a number over the recent over recent weeks. Um, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again next week. Inshallah. If we don't see you on Saturday. <laughs>